today in this video we're gonna continue the uh, uh, methods that we can use to solve the algebraic equations and to do the iterations manually to get the uh, roots um, and we discussed before the bracketed methods which are methods that depend on knowing true values uh, between which the solution lies and um, in, this, in this video we're gonna start um, the open methods which depend on one value that you know and um, by which you can start the iterations and the, the methods called fixed point method personally I prefer these methods the open methods to the um, uh, bracketed method because um, it's, it's not always the case that you have two points to start with so um, this gives you some flexibility to start with one point and it requires less calculations and less um, uh, steps to do the uh, calculations. So um, the fixed point method uh, depends on, um, or, or first you need to have your equation in this form that uh, on the left hand side you have x and the other uh, the rest of the equation to be put as uh, an x of uh, g of x which is the function of x. We call it g, you can call it uh, s or y or anything. Um, so for instance, you can have this equation, if you want to call this equation, of course this is a very simple equation, you don't need to do it by the iterations or anything, but just uh, an example. Um, you can put this equation in this form, so you have x uh, on one side and the rest of the equation to be arranged to have everything on the other side. Uh, for instance, we have sine, there should be an x here, if you have sine x equals to zero, then you can put it in this form. Um, that x plus sine x minus x equals 0, so x minus x will be, um, cancel, will cancel each other. So we'll have the equation in this form just to be in the form of x equals g of x. Um, and this is what we want to do. So uh, how the method graphically works, so simply if you have the function g of x in, is in this form, uh, and this is the x, which is a straight line with a slope of 1, and since you say we say that x equals g of x, then the solution is the intersection. Uh, and to reach this solution, we'll start with assuming a value of x, any x, and using this x, you can get the value of g of x. Um, and you, you can check if g of x equals to x, then this is the solution. And of course, you're not going to get it from the first time, so you have to try again. And the cool thing about this method is that you're not going to get a new point. You will start with the point that you already have, which is this point so this will be the x2 which is this and you will repeat the same uh, steps again till you see if it is the same or not if it's not then you'll go again and again and again um, um so this this is how uh, how you do the uh, solution um then there is two questions actually the, actually the first question is how to choose the g of x uh, you may have an equation like this and you have actually in this equation you have an x here and x here which one to choose to put on the left hand side and to the right hand side so you can see this can um, be written in this form or in this form um, and the x can be written like this or like that so the question is uh, so again this is what we have the number of possible forms of the equation equals the number of x you have so here we have two then you will have two forms of the equation um, so this is, uh, the answer to this question depends on what we call the uh, conversions criteria. There is a criteria that can, by which uh, you can check if the equation will merge or will, will diverge or not, uh, conversion or something. Uh, the conversion means that the solution will get closer as you do more iterations, it gets closer to the solution that you want. Um, so you know that you're getting closer by doing more iterations, it can be a lot of iterations, and a little number of iterations, doesn't matter, but you're getting closer. In some cases, like what we'll see today in the uh, Excel, the solution will diverge, which means that it gets farther, farther away till it gets to infinity. Um, so you have to check first which uh, one will converge and which will diverge. So this will save you some time instead of doing all the equations or all the forms, uh, possible forms, you just choose what is the right one. And the convergence criteria is simple, is um, by getting the derivative of the g of x, 
n from the derivative you substitute by the initial value this is dependent on the initial value so uh, it can converge for a value and diverge for another value it's not a function of the equation only it's a function of the equation and the value uh, that you're going to start with so if the absolute value of the um, uh, derivative at the uh, assumed value is less than one then it's gonna converge again the same uh, example that we just uh, uh, mentioned in the previous slide uh, these are the two forms of the, of the same equation if you get the derivative then this will be uh, in this form and this for equation will be in this form and let's say your initial value is 2.5 then you will have this smaller than one and this is larger than one so you will expect that this will converge and this will diverge so it is better to start with this number um, sometimes you will have the uh, uh, the criteria uh, tells you that it's not going to converge but it will converge at another value we'll see this today uh, sometimes the equation uh, likes to converge or the, the curve likes to converge at one root and, and another form of the equation will converge to another root so uh, you might have conversion but to another place but since you are doing this at at, at 2.5 so you are you are uh, converging at the closest root so this will converge at the closest root this might converge at another root but not the closest one um, in Microsoft Excel, how we do this? It's pretty simple. You just need three columns. The first column, you will put x node, the, the value that you assume, and then you calculate the g of x, which is the function. And then you calculate the error. Um, and since we assume that you are getting closer, so this we assume this is the most accurate or the more accurate value of these two. So we divide by the most accurate one, which is the g of x. And if it's uh, within the... Uh, uh, limit of accuracy that we want then it's okay if not then we take this value put it here and this is the new value of x and then repeat the same step then if not then we go put this here and then uh, so on and so forth and repeat it till you reach the uh, required conversion so this is simply how we do the um, uh, fixed points method uh, calculation now let's go to excel and see how we can do this so um, I did some preparation for the sheet to save some time, so uh, we will do again the same equation we do each time. The uh, Van der Velde equation for benzene, we have the values of the constants A and B here, we have the PRT uh, values here. Um, the equation is written in this form. Uh, we have V here, V square or V power 3, V power 2, and V. And we, since we have three Vs in the equation, then we can have three forms, as we see here. This is by taking this on the left on one side and then this by taking the the, the v power cubed on one side and then this equation by taking v power two on one side and i did the uh it's a tedious uh, um, integration but uh, i mean uh, differentiation but i did the uh, first derivative for this for this and for this so we have all the um uh, stuff that we want to start with uh, really uh, first before we start we have to see how uh, converging or not these um, equations will be so uh, I did the um, calculations for the first derivative at the assumed value so I'm, I'm gonna do two initial values uh, in this um, in this uh, video uh, I'll do at point one since we already know that we have two roots that are um, close uh, we know it's around 0.05 and the other is two point something so I'll start at point one first and then I will do the uh, iterations with the initial value of two just to see uh, the differences I already have these calculated just they are hidden just to save time because the calculations are not uh, very uh, uh, simple or quick forward or uh, straightforward you see it's uh, like very very big equation so it will be like take a lot of time so I already have this uh, and this and these values so you see from these values that the first equation and the second equations have the absolute value of the derivative at point one greater than one this is greater than one and this is greater than one this is smaller than one so we will expect that the third equation would merge or are diverge at point one and the other two will not um, and we are going to test this now so um, i'll start with the first iteration the assumed value i'll put it equal to this um, again, the calculated value is already there. I just was hiding it uh, to save time. And then the error would be the absolute value of the difference between this and this 
divided by this, and it is uh, it is um, getting further. And the second uh, step would be to take the calculated value, which is the g of x, <coughs> and put it here as another assumed value, and we'll repeat these calculations again. So see, it is. Uh, it is getting somehow different. Uh, oh wow! You see this? It's um, it's now negative point twelve, and then it's going to negative point twenty six. Uh, and as you do more iterations, it is getting to crazy numbers. You see here, it's two to the uh, power of twenty two. And then it's power of 206. It is totally diverging, so it's it's not going to work. And this is why we expected that it is going to diverge. So, well, uh, th this is going to be discarded. We're not going to consider this as a solution because it's not reaching the point that we have a solid number that we can say that this is the solution. Again, the second one, we will assume that the initial value is the point one. Again, this is already calculated. This is here just to. Um, be confirmed that this is what I did before, and the error I can take this, take a copy of this here, and we'll do the second iteration. The assumed value would be the uh, product of the first step, and then take these two and paste them here. You see, it's getting farther actually. It's 0 0.1, 0 0.27, then 0 0.55. It's it's not getting close. We know the solution from before, but. Um, as you do more iterations, you see it's getting one point something. It's not going to converge to this uh, solution. But if we go further, this is the interesting part. If you go further, you will find that it reaches the other root, which is 2.2 something. And this is what I just mentioned before, that sometimes the equation will not con converge to the cl close value, but it will converge to the further value. Um, Let's go for the third one, the assumed value again. I'm doing the same thing. The calculated value is already there. Um, and I will get this percent error here. So um, let's do the second one, the second iteration. And uh, we'll take this here. So you see it's getting closer to the 0 0.06, but we, we need to do more iterations. And as you go, oh, wow, here it is. So, after five, six, seven iterations, you are already almost already there, and the solution is done. So this is what we expect from the uh, this this uh, particular form of the equation because the criteria is uh, is already um, uh, satisfied. It's it's resident uh, one. So from these two, you can see what we mean by the conversion. And of course, this, this is one uh, clear example. Let's see if we change, and this is the cool thing about this equation, or, or this uh, way we solve the equation with Excel, is that if you change the initial value, you don't need to redo the calculation. It's already uh, ready for any initial value. So if we do two, two, and two, so you'll see something that is really interesting. This is still greater than one. So we expect it's not going to convert, and this is what we see now. It's to the power of 100 and something, and then it's um, not a number, it's this uh, weird value. Now this is less than 1 because it likes to convert to this value, and this is all already close to 2, so it's going to go to 2. So it's now reaching this value uh, very, very um, so easily. Now this is way, way greater than 1, but still it converges to 0.5. So the the form of the equation dictates which the which root it will convert to. Even if you start with a value that's close to another root, it might like to converge to uh, one of the roots. Um, just one last thing I want to uh, show you here is that um, I I did the plot the v versus g of v for each one of these, um, and I did the plot uh, for. Uh, all the three equations. So I have G1, G2, G3, which are the three equations we just uh, plotted or, or did the calculations for. And this is the 45 degrees line, which is the X line, um, the Y equals X. Um, you see here from this plot that there is one point here where you have the three uh, curves will intersect, and there is one other point here. And actually, these are the two solutions that we just found. It's 0.05 and 2.20 something. 
um, I did a zoom uh, here and here, which are these two plots. Um, and as you see here, this is the G2, this is G1, this is D3. And um, what we did that we started with, um, let's say, just to see how it converted for uh, for the uh, curves. For uh, G2, it was converging to uh, the G3 was converging to the point one. So if you start with point one. Uh, you would go here and then you would go up, you would go here, you would go up, you'll see you're going kind of in a loop around this point till you reach this point. And the same here, it was, you started with 2 with the G2, then you start here, you would go up here, uh, right up, uh, right up, right up, so you'll go in the same way uh, till you reach here. If you do the same for the other two curves, you'll find that it's diverging, so going further uh, from this point. So. Again, it's the shape of the curve that dictates everything. Um, this point is uh, this this um, uh, method is very very nice method. I, I really like it. It's very simple. You don't need to know special equations to know how to solve these equations uh, or or the, to do the solution. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, the next time we will see another method which is called Newton Raphson. It's uh, a similar method, but it's kind of a more uh, accurate way for doing the uh, fixed point method with taking into consideration that the shape of the curve would make some uh, problems with the conversion in some cases. So um, I'll see you then. Bye bye.